Oh, sip the champagne for the win of that fall day against the Niners. Tony Camino there. I'm Andy Billman here. Oh, Tony, what a fun win. What a great win against the 49ers. Yeah, really was. It's one of those games where Ayuk has that catch late in the game, and we're like, there it is. I mean, this is typical Browns fashion. We get our hopes up in a game we really had no business staying in, and we blow it right there. But for once, things went our way. Rookie third-round kicker missed a field goal. How ironic Ooh. in Cleveland. <laughs> and we get away with a huge win. Before we get into the plays, we're doing a film breakdown of this game. Check out the full article on BelieveInTheLand.com. Tony, I don't miss Kate York. Do you miss Kate York after the no. <laughs> Dustin Hopkins, I mean, he missed the one early, but to make what he had four on the day, to make four out of five in clutch situations, no complaints. Great, great day. All right, our first play up here is a screen pass, Tony. Take us through the uh take us through here what we're seeing. If I can bring it up here, hold on for a second. Technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. And yay, Tony! Go for it. So this is one of the plays. This was actually on first drive of the game. So the Niners, because Shanahan is so great at scripting the first couple of plays to start games, they got out there and they actually had a lot of success early on. But this one, you could tell right after the first couple of plays, the defenders really realized, okay, they are going to get it to Christian McCaffrey and they are. we need to key in on him. We cannot let him out of our sight. And this was that first example of that. Screenplay here where McCaffrey is going to fake the handoff and then just flare out. So here he is faking the handoff. You can see JOK immediately work downfield to match that, while Walker, who they were in man defense. This wasn't Walker's man. It was JOK's. Mm -hmm. Walker's still completely paying attention to him because he needs to make sure he fits the run properly. If it is a run play and if not, stay on him. And then he shuffles out after not getting the handoff. JOK and Walker both shuffle like they're playing defense on basketball and just with McCaffrey, put themselves in a great position. And then when the pass is completed, they beat all the blockers there. And this was... By the time McCaffrey looked up, it was like a train hit. This was wow. this was our linebackers flying around at its <laughs> finest. Both of them, JOK, had a great game. This is what happens when your D-line can allow you to play with so much freedom and speed out there. And this was to get out there and beat the screen pass before any of the blockers even had a chance. I, there, It was going to go nowhere. And this was one of their scripted plays still. And that was the only one of the only good defensive plays on their first drive. But really showed early that... They're going to use McCaffrey a lot. They're always going to look for him. He's a yep. great player. He's great in space. He's great at everything. And they did a good job keying in on him and making sure that he wasn't going to wreck the game. Um, you know, one of the players that you brought up there, and by the way, that's why it's such a key this week too. We just, uh, you know, previewing Jonathan Taylor too, which doesn't do as much as McCaffrey. McCaffrey is such a flex back. I, that's the old term where he does everything. A little bit. Roger, actually, Roger Craig used to play for the Niners back in the eighties. The key player you homed in there was JOK and Anthony Walker. That's a big injury. Probably not playing on Sunday. Big injury for the Browns, actually, I think. Not getting talked about enough this week. Yeah, I think they'll use Taki Taki more in that middle linebacker role. I would that would be my guess. Yep. Um, and he'll be fine. But Anthony Walker is really the brains of that defense. He gets everyone in order and even he, his performance on the field is good, but even before that just setting the front correctly, making sure the coverage is on the same page. He is the quarterback of the defense, as cliche of a term as that is, and would not be ideal to have him miss a game, but the next man up. Next man up is right. I, my point being, again, I don't think Walker and, – and by the way, it's very typical in football. doesn't get talked about enough. That plays an example. But Tony said he's a leader of the defense, so that's a big injury this week, taking into the Colts game. He And he does. He, he – he makes an impact, and boy, JOK's having a wonderful, wonderful year, which we get to more of him here in a second. Okay, play here too, Tony. So the offense didn't have a great game. They made enough plays to win, but had to be a little bit critical. Can't all just be sunshine after a win. <laughs> and so this is here, the underline, the red line at the line of scrimmage shows that they got five guys coming here. So this is going to be man coverage with just one high safety over the top, no linebacker playing in the middle of the field. So what I understand here from P.J. Walker is he sees this look pre-snap, and he's like, I've got Marquise Goodwin to the top of the screen, one-on-one -on -one with maybe safety help if he gets there right away, and that's your fastest receiver. So I like the thought process to get it to him, but what you'll see here, Amari Cooper at the bottom of the screen, he runs there in man defense, and so with no whole defender in the middle of the field, the corners can't play any leverage, so they're playing straight up. So Amari can shift any which way he wants, and the defender has to follow him everywhere. Cooper puts that outside release like he's going that way, 
plants that right foot and just absolutely this is like the third time on this drive he made a defender fall without even touching him like an absolute <laughs> ankle breaker and then you'll see on this next picture the defender I, I mean the safety goes right over to Goodwin the defender's on the ground and if he can get his head back to Cooper that's a walking oh. touchdown that's a walking oh. touchdown wow and it's unfortunate it's tough because I understand what Walker was seeing before I've got my fastest guy let me take a shot at him but it would it, you got to be able to just get your eyes back when something like this happens because oh. I mean Hufanga the safety back there he bails basically right on the snap because he saw exactly what PJ did okay they got their fastest guy out there probably gonna go that way when you can I feel like if it were me playing and I, I'm not in the NFL so definitely you're not just, <laughs> definitely can't just take it as much as PJ it's easier to sit here from you know with the clicker and all that and oh this is what they should have done but ideally you're gonna see the five men probably pressuring and understand that you're going to have a quick chance to win on one of those Amari Cooper routes. Not many guys in the league can stop him. And there was another play later in the game where similar thing, Elijah Moore had a walk in touchdown if he could have just got it to him and he didn't. And it's going to happen. And the other one, there was more pressure in his face. So it's understandable why it didn't happen, but to just be able to hit on one of these big plays that it's, it's there for the taking is really going to go a long way for an offense that's struggling to move the ball. Well, it brings up one other point, too. Cooper's got to be thought of more. Even in the last game, he's thought of a lot. More, 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 more. Yeah. Guy is really, really talented. We all take speed, and speed's so important in sports. And my guy's an important in the NFL. But it's not all just about speed. Ankle breaking is still a part of the game. I and mean, look at that. Because of technique, he gets open. Flat, I mean, that is wide. Open. Mm-hmm. Back to Mr. J.O.K., my favorite Irish football player, played in our game in college. So this one right here, this is the most common Browns defense that they play. They love man defense, but this variation of it is what they always do. So they've got Thornhill at the top of the defense playing that deep zone by himself, and then J.O.K., who is right to the left of Taki Taki as the linebackers, he's playing that middle hole, just anything in the middle. Mm. So what that does for the defenders, you can see Delpit on Kittle, and then the two corners, they're way they're playing man, but they're playing outside leverage, funneling the receivers inside because that's where their help is. And so JOK here is in a great position. This clear out route by the receiver is going to take Denzel, who's covering him, and Thornhill. So this is a great play call from Shanahan against he knew this was going to be the look. And look at this anticipation from Purdy. I mean, he separates his hands from the ball there. Ayuk is I mean, he's he knows where he's going. This isn't the best anticipation ever, but he has to throw him open here. JOK can still make a catch tackle on Kittle, and he can do this. He sinks perfectly and just misses this. And Ayuk was – I mean, if JOK doesn't make that play, that's great coverage. Probably still a completion because of yeah. the timing Purdy threw it with and just the fact that an in-breaking route on that type of a play design is probably going to be completed. But great play from man defense. When we can live like that, we're going to have a lot of success. Yeah, and I didn't mean to bring that up as the next play, but let me just say <laughs> something about JOK. A um, little bit of a teaser there, Miles Garrett, but back to JOK. JOK is really having a strong year, and he was not utilized well after Woods. He is he is always in the screen, Tony. Yeah, He always is. He's always in the screen. Just seems like he's playing at a different speed than everyone else. He really flies around, and linebacker is – we, it's the quarterback of the defense, but in terms of impact, it's kind of like the running back. Yep. When you're a running back, you need everything around you to go to be good for you to do your job properly. The linebackers the same way. Last year, our D line was getting pushed so far back, the linebackers couldn't even do their job properly. So, to play with a system where you've got D linemen wrecking the game like they are, it really allows him to play as free and fast as we're seeing. That. There's just a, there's a lot of examples for JFK. That's just one of them. But my gosh, the guy, just he just plays yeah. in space. Now to back yeah. to the slide I uh I had up earlier. This is Mr. Garrett. What is he? Is he a good player? Twenty? I think he's he he might be okay. So it's <laughs> crazy because you're gonna look at his basic stats and you're not gonna see any sacks on something. You're oh, but this to me could have been one of Miles' best game as a run defender. He was everywhere in the run game, and that's huh. not really what we're paying him for, to be honest. I mean, when right. you pay him the money he's getting paid, you want him to do everything. But for him to have this impact against Trent Williams, 
So here they're just running inside zone. So all their linemen are blocking to the gap over to the right. And Miles is lined up in the C gap, and his gap is to the right of Trent Williams. So he's got to get all the way over into that gap just to make the fit right for the rest of the run defense. Not only does he get into that gap, he bends. This is unbelievable to bend at this sort of. Jeez. He just, his bending angles around the edge, whatever. And that's no slouch. That might be the best left tackle in football. Yeah. Bends under him, beats him to the spot, and fits the run. Right here, even if he just stops right here, he's already done his job for the most part because Delpit, this isn't what you love to see a safety one-on-one against McCaffrey, but the fit's there. You've got an open tackle with no blocker. Miles, because he's the great player he is, goes a step further, completely sheds Trent Williams, and makes the tackle for a yeah. huge play. This was late. This was in the third quarter, I believe, when the defense was just clicking. And once we got off that first drive when they had to no longer script plays, the Browns' defense dominated. They really did. I believe that might be the play that McCaffrey got hurt on, too, because he was out uh, after that first series. Um, Miles Garrett has become a different player. JOK has become a different player. Um, it stands out. I mean, I know people – it just it, – it it's a lot of fun. So we always bring up Garrett – um, and we always think of sacks, but that just shows an example. And again, no slouch against a team that loves to run the ball, Tony. Yeah. Says a lot about this team. Speaking about loving to run the ball, Jerome Ford, I was really ready to jump off a bridge and be like, why, what, what? And then he had the last drive. And he was very, very good in the last drive, Tony. Yeah, this was a huge one. This was the one that 22, 28-yard run that set us up right in the red zone. So at the bye week, Browns, who are mostly run outside zone run concepts where they're trying to get outside, finally mixed in some more inside concepts. And this one's kind of a weird one that they ran a couple of times. So you're going to see the center Posick uh, just down block on that guy. The two guards are going to chop block almost at the two. So he'll take the guy to Teller's right and then DeWan. DeWan is going to block that guy and then climb up to Fred Warner, the linebacker. And so you see the two chop blocks here. Jed Will's job is simply just to wall off any leakers from that second level. And you can see how it works out The with Michael Dunn, this was at left guard, pulling right mm-hmm. here and chopping and Teller chopping, Dewan shoving and then getting up to Warner, post sealing his man. This is a great job from Dewan, who had a really good game. Yeah. Yes, really excited about him. And this running lane opens up perfectly. Dewan makes this play happen on this last second block. There's Jed sealing off leakers. Najoku's in a good spot. And there's a nice play for a big chunk. And then even better, to not just give all the credit to the big guys, Jerome Ford makes a nice move at the top of the play and makes the run go probably 8, 10 yards longer than it should have. And this was huge. This was the play of the game. We were, how were we going to get one more drive to get points? And this set us up to really, if we were one first down away from just kicking a field goal to end the game and not giving it back. Huge play. Ford, uh, I'd like – he looked good when he had chances to make guys miss. There haven't been a whole lot of those. Yeah. And yeah. that's kind of what's yeah. tough. Chubb is so good at finding – First level, those second level, nowhere. third yeah. level. Ford's not great at first level. Now, once he gets past, that's what he does really well. Like, once he gets past the defensive line, he can really juke and get out there and really make moves as he did in that last drive. That's what I noticed about Ford. Um, I want to make another comment. I'm glad you pointed up this play. When they did their, and they love this. Boy, I mean, it's the time for come. Run sweep to the It's like the Packers from the 60s. Run sweep to the left. Run sweep to the left. Um, it was not working on Sunday. And I'm glad they did some other things there. It really helped this game. In fact, I would implore more. Mr. Stefanski, do more. Yeah. Do more. Because now if you got Batonio back there, um, I think it will really help because, simply put, Jed is probably more apt to handle those kind of plays and not when he's the center focus. Because on the left sweep, it's left tackle, left guard. I mean, they've yeah. got to make the plays. There's really nothing else. The wide receiver, sure, but it's really about the left guard, left left tackle. It's everything. I like how they did that in this game, Tony. Liked it. What more? Yeah, I really liked all the – they went a lot more inside zone runs, which is something they hadn't been doing over the last couple of years because that's not what Chubb – and the blocking scheme was the best at. But they did look really good with some of these inside zone runs. Got us the biggest play of the game. And Jed Wills, it is nice to take the pressure off him. I will tip my hat. It was, he had a solid game. The penalty on the Joku screen hurts, and that was clear as day. He was 
three, four yards downfield. But other than that, he had a pretty good game. And, he did. And that's nice to see because but it's not that we haven't seen him play well. We need him to start stacking these performances. Not, yeah. not just one and then two bad games and then one. We need this to be more of a consistent thing. It remind, it's like basketball. There's sometimes certain guys can be the focal point of the offense and they can't. I don't think Jed can be the focal left sweep guy. Now, in a play where it's more emotion and there's a lot more people inside, I think Jed can do well. In fact, it doesn't surprise me. I think he did really well in this game. Um, I think he's better when he's a complimentary tackle, not the left tackle that has to make a sweep play. That's all I'm going to say. I don't. I, I saw that play run two or three, I know twice, probably three times, and boy, it just went, <laughs> went nowhere. Mm-hmm. But these type of plays late did work. And I'll say this again about the Browns, which is good for Stefanski. They are running the ball a lot. And by the way, I'd run the ball more, but that's me. Um, especially because of that defense. But if Ford gets that second level, my God, he can make plays. Yeah. He, he really, really can make plays. Tony does a great article on believeintheland.com. and can tell you more about what we saw here today. And check out all of our stuff at believeintheland.com.